deja vu as far as the front five cars on the grid is concerned for race two this afternoon. Exactly the same lineup as race one. But for Ricard Rydell and the Volvo, our pole sitter, he'll be hoping race two isn't his worst nightmare come true. Remember, he fought very hard, but in race one, he was overcome by an avalanche of Nissans, just couldn't hold them off. Now, he said he just couldn't do it in a straight line. Tire wear was a bit of a factor. Race two is longer, Waddy. I just don't know whether he can hold them out. Well, the Thruxton Meister has had two pole positions this afternoon. He can't do better than that. But, of course, races are not won for pole position. They're won by the chequered flag. And with Nissan and, in fact, the top five grid exactly the same as the sprint race, that job's going to be none the easier. Alongside Menu in the third row is Vincent Rademacher, who really has been a revelation this afternoon. Anthony Reid alongside independent Matt Neal. And the second of the Renaults alongside, again, a disappointing James Thompson in the fifth row. The two works Foxhalls on row six, and again Lee Brooks doing a good job this time with Paula Cook alongside in row seven. Russell Spence and Mark Blair make it row eight, and an unfortunate Peter Cox has to start in the rear after he failed to start in the Weybridge during the qualifying session. Revs are up. I'd say watch the lights, but there aren't any to watch. This is a flag start because the lights have failed here at Thruxton Circuit. Flags down and they're away, and Rydell's away, and the Nissans go with him. So the most affords a clean start by everybody. Now, where's Aiello really pressuring Rydell? Shades of race one on board with Aiello, trying to find a way past. Leslie must be over to the left there somewhere, steaming into the complex for the first time, trying to get past middle of the circuit. Aiello right beside them. David Leslie going wide around the outside. Can he find space? That's Jason Plato right in there behind them. Into the left hand. Oh, Leslie's a bit wide. Leslie's a bit wide. And look, menu spreads the eye of the needle straight through the middle. Menu in the fourth up into third. So it's Rydell, then Aiello. Yellow, then menu. Then Leslie's lost a place. Oh, pull the cork now. Oh, she's off again. She must have must have walked under an arcade. A ladder's on the way to the pit. Rotten luck for her. Rejoins the race. Must have been helped around. It was very, very tight there into that first couple of corners. The field really compresses. David Leslie, though, last night very badly in the complex. It looks like Jason Plato caught the back of the Nissan and shoved him a little bit straight rather than going left. Straight for the first time. Now there's Reed's teammate Menu, and he's trying to hold off Leslie. Leslie trying to go around the outside as they drop speed into the complex. Not near life, says Menu, holds him out. Leslie's still in fourth place. Ford, and the first of the Renaults, then Matt Neal right up there in the hunt as well, one of the lead independents just outside the top six. Now Ayala, what can he do? Puff of smoke. And you pressing hard. Leslie really trying to work her way back, get that spot back. And there's the view from Jason Plato's car. Plato, of course, didn't finish in the first race, the sprint race, trying desperately to find a way past the Ford V6 Mondeo. And this is the view that Plato has looking up at the back of that Mondeo with a revised V6 engine. Jason Plato doing everything he can. Man, you're doing everything he can to hold out Leslie. But he stepped sideways there. The car moved left as he turned into Noble. Bit of an oversteer. Leslie through. Good pass by David Leslie. He's been so aggressive this afternoon. And now trying to make up time lost in the complex. But he gets shuffled back with that contact with Jason Plato. Like a Gatling gun as they fly across the top of us into Church Corner. Hitting that apex at over 120. Rydell still leads. Aiello. over by one of the Nissans as we come up into the complex. Rydell getting a work over by two of the Nissans as we come up into the complex. And there's Jason Plato. Nice shortcut, Jason. Misses the apex. And it seems to leave the team wondering, what did Jason do? But it's permitted as long as you don't gain position. And the team is still a little bit, well, what happened? I don't know. You know. No one's telling anybody as we move down into the Campbell Cobb Seagrave chicane again, regrouping. Leslie really pushing Aiello. It's just like in race one. Aiello prepared to pace himself. David Leslie wants to force the issue. But of course, in the Nissan team, there are no team orders. Whoever leads can keep that position. And one guy desperate to keep his position is Rickard Rydell. He is leading at the moment in the Volvo. But he'll be really aware these Nissans get quicker as it goes on. It looks like it's a case of deja vu. Been there, done that. And uh, if that's going to be the case in this, the feature race this afternoon, well, Rickard Rydell can already know the outcome of this race. But of course, he's still leading. And he's now counting down the laps till he makes his pit stop to change into fresh time to give himself a chance to recover and take victory. Down the back straight now. This is where the Nissans really seem to have an advantage. On board with Aiello now. That's the gap. There's Rydell. Look one side. Faint one side. Look the other. Can't get around there. This tightens up right now. Through that 
chicane. Grindel using all of the chicane to get past. And little bits of body rope tremors. The Volvo team look, they're looking somewhat concerned. As a pair of jackals, I should say Nissans, hunt them down. And all of this is playing into the hands of Alain Menu, who is catching the pair of them. getting ready, desperate to lean back on the gas as they do now, as they leave the back of the complex, out onto the back of the circuit. Menu really in touch. Well, he's drawn himself up to the back of this leading trio again. What we saw in the first race this afternoon, Rydell in control, keeping the two Nissans behind him. And the result is that Alan Menu, running quicker, is drawing himself into a lead four race. Look at Aiello, so close to the back of that Volvo. Hanging on there like a Nissan bumper sticker on the back of the Volvo. Couldn't get any closer. Ooh, so difficult through church. Look at those cars moving around there, bumping at 135. Now watch the two Nissans. Leslie, the second of the two. He's going to get the best aerodynamic drag. Tries to find a way past. Aiello goes up on the left-hand side. But the Canny Rydell just keeps the Volvo in front. I think just is the operative word there. Just keeps the Volvo in front. That is serious pressure as we come back across the line again. And you're getting closer. Reed's come up to join this battle. Right behind Reed is Jason Plato in the lead. One of the Renaults flying through Allard's over that bump. Difficult corner, Allard's. Now here's the independence battle on board with Blair ahead of us, Russell Spence, and uh, strangely some body damage there. Independent newcomer Russell Spence has been the most consistent this year. Consistent in that in every race, he's managed to have body damage somewhere on that Renault. Leaping through that dip in the complex, there's the lead independent, Matt Neal, and he's right up there with the works boys. There's the view of the works boys ahead of us. That's Vincent Brademacher in the second of the Volvo. So you can see that car sliding around. There's not a lot of grip. And it's a very inspired Vincent Brademacher we're seeing here at Thruxton. A circuit he knows very well from his Formula 3 and single-seater days racing in Great Britain. very concerned about one of his two drivers. Well, David Leslie's lost some momentum there, as you can see. Because Menu had a lunge at him, and now Eddie Reed is having a lunge at his teammate. Two Fords side by side. Reed on the right, Menu on the left. Right behind them is Jason Plato coming into the complex. The view from Plato. Look at these. These two Ford boys will take each other out. I'm through. No, I'm not. Single file. Just single file, but Anthony Reed has picked up a spot. Alan Menu has lost out there, all because of that tangle with David Leslie. And Anthony Reed, for the first time, really showing the kind of performance that he knows he's got, and not what Alan Menu is teammate. This is the superstar team of touring car racing, and their two drivers are fighting for fourth place. And if we got a race on our hands, there's a race for every single position on the track. Aiello now trying to have a look down the inside of Church. You're a newcomer, mate. That doesn't really work. Well, it does, but only occasionally. And this isn't one of them. And here we go again. Let's try it this time, shall we? Leslie to the left, Aiello to the right. I'm right now. I'll hold the middle line. Here's the view from Aiello's car. Leslie on her left, having a look around the outside. Another hip and shoulder, but he's actually pushed himself off. Leslie's off into the infield. And he's on. Leslie's across the middle of us. Anthony Reed has T-boned him. Absolute nightmare. Smoke out of the front of Reed's car. Where's Leslie? There he is. He's turned around on the exit to the chicane. He went through it, not around it. Across the track. Reed's car stopped. and you should see the Ford. There's Ray Malik again, having a look at his car. He can see there's problems. Leslie's made it back to the pits. Hey boys, it needs to be pushed away. We can't, let's just get him in. Look at the front of that Ford. Well, it certainly is rapid fit, but it's not going to be rapid fix this afternoon. That's big damage for Anthony Reid. And David Leslie makes it into the pits. Car gets jacked up, but they're putting the trolleys underneath the car. The reason is they're going to push it back into the garage. And, of course, David Leslie reported back to the team that the steering on the car was broken in that very, very heavy collision with Anthony Reid. Well, here he returned at the scene of the crime. We're on board with Leslie's car looking backwards, breaking into the complex. There's Aiello. We've just passed him. Missed the apex. Cross. 
and harpooned by Anthony Reid. Um, I tried to overtake Rickard in the first lap, he drove me off the circuit. I tried to overtake him going into the uh, chicane, he drove me off the circuit. I tried for the third time to overtake him at the chicane, he drove me off the circuit again. What more can I say? Well, I wouldn't mind the Ford Body Shop contract. There's Alain Menu's car, similarly damaged, but Anthony Reid, he's, he's limping back, his race must be over. Yeah, the damage, I think, would be too much to the front of the Mondeo, but Leslie's face says it all. I'm just having a really frustrating day at Thruxton. Anthony Reid tried to take advantage, as any racing driver would have done in that situation. I lay blame with both drivers equally. One had the chance to be more cautious, the other had the opportunity to take avoiding action. Talk about taking avoiding action, how sideways was Vincent Rademacher. They were the onboard pictures of his Volvo. There he is now, side by side with El Amenu down into church. He's forced the issue and he's through. Tough stuff from Rademacher, just regrouped from a big opposite lock moment, caught it and passed. And if Vincent Rademacher ever needed to win his touring car spurs, he did it with that pass. He was on opposite lock, on the lock stops. He controlled the car and got past this man ahead of his Alan Menu. And an absolute high jump there from Ricard Rydell, who must be feeling some almighty pressure from Leroy Aiello, straight across the curves. Peter Cox in the Honda, first of the pitters. Yes, so Honda, the first pit in the pit lane, and it's a four-tire stop for Peter Cox, not just the regular two, not just two on the left-hand side, but four tires. This is going to be a key manoeuvre for the Honda team, and for others in the pit lane, they may follow suit. Go, go, go. Speed limit, pit lane, speed limit. 12 seconds for four tires. Main question is, are four tires going to be quicker over the course of 32 laps? Or is it simply going to be too much time lost in the pit lane? Well, here's a Volvo win, but 12 seconds by the Honda guys for four tyres is very, very quick. And they're doing exactly the same thing at Volvo, four tyres. They don't have to. Two is a mandatory stop, but four is what they're actually doing. So we saw a 12-second stop from the Honda team. Volvo, can they do it any quicker? 11, 12 seconds, 13, 14. Vincent Rademacher must be sitting in the car, swearing in Belgium, Dutch or any Benelux language he can manage. Here this afternoon is Jean Christophe Fouillon. In fact, he led for one lap. He comes into the pits to make his left hand side change only. Let's watch the time. Remember, 6.7 for Plato and 6.9 for Fouillon. You can't get any better than that. And there goes Rydell, and there goes Jason Plato, absolutely glued to the back of him. And a menu back into the pits. This is a drive through penalty. Ricard Rydell has dared ahead of him John Cleland, who's being absolutely overwhelmed. John Cleland yet to pit big flame out from the back of Rydell's car. They run it very fuely. Cleland holding onto the inside line meantime. <laughs> What's going on? The car's all over the place. Where can they get past? Well, I think John Cleland has realised I'm a racing driver and I only like to race when I've got cars around me, but sadly that's the most action John has seen so far this afternoon. Rademacher, we're on board with him meantime, is working over the back of Jason Plato's car. But what this also means is that there's only one car between Rademacher and his teammate. Vincent and Rademacher came into the team, took a drive that Matt Neal didn't want, and is beginning to show the kind of performance that we have seen from him in European touring car racing. And maybe this is the best balanced driver lineup we have ever seen in the Volvo team. That's just what Jason Plato would want to hear right now. Sandwich between the pair of them having a look at the outside of Ricard Rydell's Volvo. Megan, don't do that manoeuvre. The damage on the left-hand side of that car is a bit of a hit to you, Jason. He doesn't let people pass there, but you can see the dents down Rydell's car. You can even see the suspension work under Rydell's car as he cockwheels both sides, clubbing those curves. Let's count them down. Aiello, Rydell, then Plato holding out the top three. Closely followed by Vincent Rademacher in the second of the Volvos. Matt Neal, independent in fifth position outright. JCB and sixth. Things getting very close as they come into the Campbell Cobb Seagrave complex. Matt Neal forced to the outside but takes advantage. Puts Rademacher back one place, but Rademacher comes back again as they go on into the country. Great motor racing from these two. Had a good scrap in race one and this is even closer. Now what can Matt Neal do? See how hard he's working at the wheel there. The car bounces around. Jason Plato trying to get some grip. Behind him is Rademacher, very much in touch. Rydell is just ahead of them. There's a guy called Aiello. We forgot about him. He's way up in front. He's got a huge lead. Plato down into Church Corner. Big flame out from Rademacher. They run a very fuelly mix in that car. Now they're coming up on the back of independent Paula Cook. An entire gaggle of these cars. There's Rydell ahead of us as Paula Cook. Get me out of here. I've got about a dozen of these guys closing in 
Conley. What's she going to do? Out on the brakes, moves to the left. That's fair. Lydell through. Behind is Plato. She's got to go through. That's a problem for Plato. Which, which way? He goes to the left. And Radamacher on the right. Oh, bad news. Plato's really lost out of that shuffle. Radamacher's through. That heel and the red is in. He's picking up places as well. Moves down the inside of Jason Plato. Side by side through Allard. James Thompson, a big slide from him. He's trying to hang on. Three abreast. That doesn't work. She bounced around all over the place between car to car, couldn't get out of the way. She just wanted somebody to beam her up and get her out of there. But James Thompson, here you are. Look at this battle, look at the racing that we're seeing. Six cars fighting for positions. Polakov trying to do the right thing, trying to get out of the way. Very difficult when you meet the entire field coming into a chicane. On board with Bouillon trying to hang on to the back of James Thompson. There's his teammate, though. That's Jason Plato. Really giving this car a workout now, trying to extend its legs. Radamacher pulling a little bit ahead of them. And there's the race leader I was talking about. Come on, my yellow. Well, he's out for a Monday afternoon drive. He's driving so well, so within himself. But most importantly, he's not putting any additional load into the car. He's looking after the tyres. And that will ultimately be the result of this afternoon. Look after your tyres. That lead. 12 seconds back to Rydell in second place. Then Radamacher, his teammate, now right behind him. Plato dropped the spot. Fourth, Matt Neal fifth. And James Thompson in the Honda is just nosed into the top six, getting past Jean-Christophe Fillon. But Radamacher, meantime, has really moved up on his teammate. There's the teammate dead ahead. Vincent Radamacher, new to the team, Ricard Rydell. The old hand, the old master and the young pretender. This is going to be something Ricard Rydell hasn't felt from a teammate for many a long year. Well done, Vincent, but you're getting close enough, says Ricard Rydell, as they move out and into the right-hander, down towards Church of Radamac, is really pressing on. Well, Vincent seems to enjoy an oversteering car on a circuit, really, that suits oversteer. But if you can't control it, it's the most frightening circuit in the UK. This is the most frightening corner, I reckon, in the UK. Church corner, lined off camber, and incredibly fast. And if you look at the speed through there, Rydell actually seemed to pick up a little bit of space on Radamaka, but now Radamaka is closing that gap. in the sprint race and in the feature race. You'll have to clear the grass out. Clear the grass out. Shame they've got to clear the grass out. It's quite a smart hedge, actually. Almost a bit of topiary on the front of Matt Neal's car. Look to the team's body language. That will tell Matt Neal. Sorry, Matt. Your day's finished. Rotten Lucky was running really strongly. Now, here's a reliving of the moment through church. And it's scary when you run wide in church. 135 miles an hour. Matt Neal onto the track didn't involve anybody else yeah there's a lot of debris with cars going off out there and i must have picked up some debris on my left front tire which caused the slow deflation and then as i turned into church which is the quickest corner here front left these three are still at play radamacher in the middle and that's what radamacher is doing he's just sitting there riding his shotgun for his teammate his job today is to keep jason plato from getting anywhere near Ricard rydell they don't want plato to score more points than team leader Rydell might achieve. You reckon he's playing with him, Woody? He may be playing with Rydell, but he ain't playing with Plato. Plato's going to have a headache. How can I get past Rademacher? I want to get it right now. Not today, sunshine. And this is doing Volvo's championship chances no harm whatsoever. Meantime, John Clellan coming up. Paula Cook's taking the shortcut again. That's going to be the lowest mileage Honda out there. It's only doing three quarters of a lap every time. But Lee Brooks, the independent in the Honda, is really giving John Clellan a workout. Brooks and his Honda are leading the Michelin Independent Cup this afternoon. And Brooks is also what might be described as an owner-driver in this very competitive championship. And a brilliant afternoon has Lee Brooks, but a man that's had maybe a better one is Laurent Aiello. Coming down into the chicane for the last time. Aiello about to take the checkered flag. Two wins in one day. Two on the trot. The first guy to go back to back. Two races. Astounding performance. And he's across the line. Leroy Aiello wins round six. 
Well done again, Laurent. Fantastic. First person to win two in the weekend. Well done. What a win it was. You need a calendar to time the gap back to the guys in second and third. Nearly six seconds, and it had been even bigger till he started to cruise. Rydell in second place, and his teammate Radamaka right behind him. And that's his first podium position in the BTCC. Jason Plato, valuable points in fourth place for him. And Peter Cox, fifth. Great result. Remember, he started off the back of the grid. Disappointing afternoon for Alain Menu, who'll be thinking what could have been. Sixth position, JCB in seventh, Thompson eight, Clever nine, and a top ten for Lee Brooks. I think the car was uh, even better than the first race. Uh, I'm really pleased. What can I say? Uh, it was a perfect weekend for me and for Nissan. I don't know what happened to David. I don't know the result for the team. I mean, I don't know where we finish. But I think it's a great result for us and for myself too. And it certainly is a great result for him too because he's now equal leader with James Thompson. Jason Plato, as I said, valuable points for him third. And Ricard Rydell moves up into equal fourth position with the storming independent Matt Neal. And there's a real traffic jam in sixth place with Leslie, Bouillon, Cox and Rademacher all locked together. Now, of course, Rademacher could have been ahead of this bunch if he'd just passed his teammate in the last race. But could he have? I think so, yeah. You never know. But if it was another car another from another team, I for sure have a go and try something to, to move. But uh, it was nowhere to do that uh, because... I'm here to help for the Manufacturer Championship and I'm not going to have a go for the championship, driver championship this year. I know that uh, I have so much to learn and, uh, and uh, I think I'm looking for a, a driver championship in, in the future, but not, not this year. Well, you can't say Vincent didn't do his bit to help his team in the Manufacturer's Championship, but it wasn't enough to put a big dent in that Nissan lead. Look at that, 105 points. Bear in mind, independent Matt Neal is helping accumulate that score. Strong position for Honda in second, though, ahead of Renault third place. Volvo four, and Boxall rounding out the top five. But it was this fellow's afternoon as far as the independents are going. Lee Brooks, his first win in the Michelin Cup for independence, and that really helps him, that first win, to consolidate his position in second place in the out-and-out -out championship for the independents. Mark Blair, third, Paula Cook in fourth, Russell Spence rounding out the top five, and Matt Neal, look at that, storming ahead 75 points. But it was Laurent Aiello's afternoon. The first man to have two wins in a row. And remember, if he has four in a row, wins the next two races at Brands Hatch, he'll take home a purse of a quarter of a million pounds.